All right, time now to take a look at some of the big issues of the week, the highs, the lows and what's been making headlines. Joining us for our very first edition of The Backbench this morning, we have the Federal Member for Perth, Alana McTiernan, and State Liberal MP Peter Katsambanis. Thank you both for coming in this morning. One story, of course, has dominated headlines uh, mm. well ever since uh, the news broke uh, late Thursday night last week, our time, the MH17 disaster. Look, we won't go over the finer details mm. of, of the, the events of the week, but of course a traumatic time for the nation, um, a time when we look to our leaders for leadership on the world stage. Alana, I'll ask you first, um, Tony Abbott's performance and I suppose Julie Bishop's performance on the world stage as well, have they represented our interests well? Look, I, I think so. I, th I think Tony Abbott coming out um, very early and very strong and mm. demanding some uh, accountability and some action was actually the right thing to do. So yeah. uh, I think that um, um, that was a, an appropriate response, you know, not mincing words. I think people didn't want to see lots of caveats and diplomatic speak so much. Uh, I, so I, I supported that and I think uh, uh, Bill Shorten has, um, has supported the, yeah. the, the, the pretty, um, I, I wouldn't say aggressive, but Strong. a full-bodied um, mm. approach that um, Mr Abbott has taken. Peter? Look, I think Tony Abbott has been terrific in what are tragic and difficult circumstances not only from an Australian perspective, but I think he's led the international challenge. Mm. And so has Julie Bishop. Both of them have presented a modern, focused Australia. And as Alana rightly said, they haven't been merely mouthed. They've actually gone out there and forcefully put the position that those responsible for this should start owning up to it, for starters. And secondly, we have a fa a, an amazing challenge now to firstly secure that site and bring all those bodies home so that the families that have been affected by this tragedy can have closure. Yeah. And I think both Tony and Julie have stood proudly and well on the international stage. All right. A more local matter now. This saga that refuses to end, Troy Buswell's car crash. We're now five months on from when it happened. The Premier this week has come out and said, come on, Troy, pay up. The 15 grand damage you caused to your ministerial car, time for you to get the checkbook out and sort this out once and for all. Uh, the right call? Absolutely the right call, but it should have been, uh, you know, part of uh, 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 a discussion that happened uh, as soon as the Premier became mm. aware of this. I mean, quite honestly, this, um, just for their own sake, to allow this to keep, um, to bleed on and bleed on, um, is just unacceptable. There should have been... I, I, I think the whole way this has been handled has been appalling, like keeping it a secret for a fortnight and then the rumours suddenly emerging and then gradually, you know, not having a proper accountability on this thing as soon as it became known. I think everyone would have been... Um, uh, seem to have been acting with much more integrity if there had been um, total honesty up front and uh, and a full acceptance of of responsibility. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I just I really do think now it, it is making Troy's position really untenable yep. in the in the parliament. Quite frankly, Peter, he's a colleague of yours. You must be sick and tired of seeing his name on the front page of newspapers, at the top of news bulletins. This has been plaguing your party now for five months. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Is it time to kick him out or force him to pay? Look, I think um, what Colin Barnett said this week is what Western Australians have been saying for five months. It was a good call, but I think a call that should never have needed to be made. Yep. Um, and five months on, I just want this to be put behind us because there's a lot of work being done in Western Australia to make this state a better state, and it's being drowned out mm. by an issue that is a serious issue, but should now be finalised and dealt with once and for all by Troy. All right, let's move on to euthanasia now. Uh, we saw in the last 24 hours the suspension of Dr Philip Nitschke. Uh, this comes, of course, after an investigation into advice he gave to a Perth man, 45-year-old Nigel Brealey, uh, who had uh, depression issues, uh, gave him advice about ending his life. The resulting investigation has now led to the Australian Medical Board uh, suspending his medical licence. Was that the right call to make? Well, look, I guess the point I want to make is that I think this 
issue, unfortunately, is detracting from yep. the real debate that we need to have in this country, and that is about the ability for people that are terminally ill to be given the opportunity to die with dignity, to be able to decide, once you are terminally ill, when it is you want your pain and suffering to end. And this whole uh, really unfortunate episode that's got nothing to do with euthanasia um, has, clouded, um, has been clouded by um, Dr Nishki's involvement um, with this uh, guy. So I, I think we, one of the things I want to get very clear, over 80% of the Australian population believe that people with a terminal illness should have the right uh, to die with dignity and to determine their own fate. There is uh, a piece of legislation now that is under investigation in the federal parliament. I'd urge people to have a look at that because we as politicians should be dealing with this matter. It's mm. limped on for year after year. We believe the federal government has got the constitutional uh, power to do with this and we need to mobilise the community to say we want our politicians to do what 80% of us believe should be the case. All right, we're going to have to move on to our, our final point. Sorry, Peter, to cut you off okay. there. Um, look, it is a slightly more trivial note, perhaps. Jackie Lambie, the pup senator from Tasmania. We might just have a little listen to uh, some of the audio taken from a, a commercial radio, a breakfast program in Tasmania, Hard FM. Let's have a listen. Oh, we find love for Jackie. Let's find love now. They must have heaps of cash and they've got to have a package between their legs, let's be honest. <laughs> And I don't need them to speak. They don't even need to speak. You don't want a man who speaks. There you go. Jackie Lambie the likes perfect a well man. Packed, a well-packed lunchbox. <laughs> she did use the phrase well hung as well. Peter, look, really quickly, sorry, we are running out of time here, but uh, if you'd made similar comments about parts of a, a lady's anatomy, do you I think you'd get the same... I here, I'd be tarred and feathered, but more importantly, I want to know what Jackie Lambie is going to do to get rid of the mining tax that is destroying jobs here in WA. I want to know what Jackie Lambie is going to do about Tasmania standing on its own two feet and not taking Western Australia's share of GST. And I don't hear any of that. And it's trivialising politics. And it's really sad when we get to that stage. And I hope that we can get a bit more um, mature about what needs to be discussed as politicians in this country. All right. No, and I agree with that. I think that what we've... I mean, Jackie is obviously out there trying to create a persona for herself and yep. a character. Understand that. But, there, you know, there's got to be some sort of limits. And there are really... You can have a bit of fun, but there's got to be some serious issues mm. debated. You've got to demonstrate you're able to debate those issues. And, uh, and I think um, Jackie's probably um, done herself a disservice with this. She said she... Wants to be Prime Minister one day. I don't like her chances, but anyway, there you go. Alana and Peter, really appreciate you coming in this morning. Thank you for that.